right, so I'll introduce yourself really quickly. Uh, I'm Matt, this is Ming. We're, we are, we run um, Lushan Properties. So we're a real, real estate investment firm, obviously. Uh, this is a property tour. Uh, we do more than just realtor services. We have advisory services, where we teach you how to invest in real estate. Uh, we have realty services, help you find the property, renovation services, uh, to help you create the rent departments, and this is the property manager. Uh, this is our annual property tour. We had fun last one. Um, so this is this is actually my place here. This is a fourplex. Um, we bought this about ten years ago, roughly. Um, so we'll take you through. We'll kind of show you um, what it's like on the inside. This is the reason we're showing you this first is I'm showing this as a proof of concept to be able to show how our business model works, how you buy a house and make it. respectful you know as you're going through the properties uh, I'll try to take most of the questions outside so that way we're through the property pretty quickly uh, just to re we're a big group so I want to reduce the uh, the impact of the tenants this one so it is tenanted um, I live in one of the units hopefully for not too much longer but uh, I live in one of the units I have tenants in the other uh, three units we saw two of our tenants just leave and the other one is out of town so I think this is all empty so we can spend a little more time here than the other two properties. We're gonna go see two properties afterward. Our two properties afterward are, are fully tenanted and they've actually specifically requested that we kind of go through quickly. Um, like I said at Loblaws, um, last year when we did this, I got into trouble because people were making comments about the tenant's furniture and well, stuff like that. So, bothering them while they're in the washroom. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, any questions? Cool? Okay, so why don't we split this group, try to split this group again. Um, here, how about if you guys come with me? Yeah, yeah, right there. No, 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 right there. <laughs> we break up this apartment. <laughs> uh, over, yeah, it's over here. Come with me. You guys can go with me. Uh, I'll do the code to because we'll be using it today. Yeah, so I'll quickly just go over what it is. So as the, two, the listings on the, the two listings of the property, the two properties we're going to see afterward, okay, uh, they are both listed. One of them is sold conditionally already, but they're still allowing us to see it. So people do buy these properties, okay, even at these price points, because they make sense. Uh, these ones are a little more expensive than we typically would show. The ones we've shown in the past are around the 1, 1.2 mark. Um, there was nothing good to show you um, in around that price point, so I, these ones are on the 1.8 point A little more expensive, but as we'll see, the, the financials still make it viable, still make it make sense. Uh, something else I was going to say. Yeah, I forget. <laughs> Let's, uh, the analysis will do that. Oh, yeah. Flip so, so the sheet over. So in the, I created this specifically for a street smart tour, the first one we did years ago. No one listened to me and no one filled it out <laughs> as we went through. So I don't expect you to fill it out this time. Um, just look at this and keep these points in mind. These are the things that we look for as we start going through properties. We want to understand these various points, right? And especially, here's just, just a, a hint, when you go see five, ten properties in a day, you're not going to remember the specific. So I do encourage you to, as you go through, write these things down. And this is a, I've made it as easy as a checklist, essentially. Fill in, fill in the checklist um, as you go through. And you don't have to do that right now, but I wanted you to be aware of the stuff that we do look at. You know, we look at the roofs, we look at the soffits of fascia, we look at the downspouts, we look at the windows, we look at the foundation, we look at the furnace, we look at the wiring, the panel. So as we go through, those are things that we're gonna, I'm going to point out or make a point out. Cool.
Yeah, we're gonna use this as a reference um, as we walk through. Okay, let's go. Please take off your shoes. So those that are following me, we're going around this way. Yes. Ouais, mais ils disent qu'on te souhaite. There's a reason. There's a reason it's in good condition. We'll talk about it in a sec. Okay. Surprise. Oh, it's pretty nice renovated. Home sweet home. <laughs> so this one's yours, right? This is actually where I live. Right. I've lived right. here for about 10 years. Uh, this has been a sacrifice because <laughs> it's okay. I've I've spent so much time investing and building my portfolio that personally we've never uh, we've never benefited from our portfolio but last year we finally if it ever gets done oh sorry I'm going to talk to my wife um, could, could you comment on like the, the primary residence like if you have a like a like a triplex or whatever and you live in one of the units when you sell it, you have to pay. Can I can I answer it? that? Can I answer that question? Um, maybe a bit later. Sure, sure. I just want to talk about um, this specific stuff. Sure, sure. Uh, anyway, to answer your question quickly, that's a good for example, as primary residence. That's the right answer. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. So, come in. Feel feel free to walk around. Just don't steal anything. Uh, so this this is this is my apartment. Like this is my wife, my wife, my my myself, my wife, and my son all live here. You'll see pictures of us. <laughs> um, so this house. So to Rex's point, this house was a lot younger than the ones in the neighborhood. So if you're familiar with, with where we are, we're in the annex in downtown Toronto. The annex is historical for a lot of the Victorian type homes, right? 100, 120 year old homes. And if you walk in the annex, you'll see them. That's pretty much all you see around here. This one has a weird address, 903 and a half. Hey, uh, 903 and a half. The half is because they actually severed this lot and created, um, uh, created a new property here. So they built this place only 40 years ago. Actually, they've owned it for 10 years. So they built it 50 years ago now. So it's a lot younger than the rest of the houses around here. That's why the style of the house is actually different as well. That's why if you if you go outside and inspect, you'll see that the brickwork is still immaculate. It's not like the crumbling brick that you'll see in these 100, 120 year old homes. Right? So that just to answer your question, that's why this house seems to be in pretty good condition. Right? So the foundations were good and everything else. So I purchased this about 10 years ago. Guess, guess, let's, just, let's just guess. How much do you think we purchased this for 10 years ago? 550. 550? 450? 450? No. Or something? Did you was it renovated like this already or we we spent about seventy thousand just in our unit doing upgrades. Uh, we put like we this was just a window before, like we blew it out, built a deck and stuff like that. So we spent additional money. But it was lightly well, it was renovated, but just not very well. Okay. Was it already uh <clears throat> four bucks? So when I purchased it, I purchased it from someone. This is actually one of my first investment properties. Um, I purchased it and it was already renovated, but it was not a good renovation. Like this wall, so for, this this was a load-bearing wall previously, and they just took away the wall and didn't do anything. So they bought it, the whole thing it was like still caving so, in. So I, I spent lots of money doing under remediation and stuff like that. So what do you think? 550? 450? It's still the annex people. <laughs> 600. So just 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 in case you're not too familiar, in downtown Toronto, the annex is one of the most expensive neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. so just to give you an idea. Uh, the most expensive neighborhood is probably uh, Yorkville, right? Uh, then next is probably Annex, Little Italy, and uh, uh, Riverdale. Yeah. 800. 810. So I, I bought it for 810. Uh, someone else had bought it for seven, for 640. Then they did this renovation and it sold to me for 810. I still don't know how they did it because I don't know how you possibly renovate it.
from a single family into a fourplex for wherever they spent. Like after land transfer, after realtor fees, they flow. After land tra transfer tax, uh, realtor fees, how is there any money left over for renovation? So it, doesn't, cheap. it doesn't make any sense. It was a Chinese person, <laughs> which is why they were really low bearing walls, but it didn't support them. But I still don't know because I know the cost of renovations, and basically, like, there's even just buying materials, there wouldn't have been enough. I don't know what they did. They got free labor. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> they, they promised their family members over in China a free plane ticket over here. Um, yeah, so 810, and we'll take a look around, and then I'm going to ask you what you think uh, the rent is for this place. So come and in and take a look. And is it legal for flux? The definition of legal is not very formal. Shut off that camera for a second. <laughs> <laughs> it's his camera anyway, he can edit it out afterwards. So. <laughs> <laughs> come, on, come on in, take a seat. <laughs> so, no comments. <laughs> Just keep in mind who cut it up, right? Oh, oh, right. 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 Yeah. 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 You can walk to Bloor Station. You can walk to Bloor Station. Yeah. Eight ten. Yeah. And there's a garage too. Yeah. Well, right now it's I'll assume this was probably like two point two point five mil right now. Because you can park one car here and maybe even two cars here. Yeah, and he he parked one more. He also parked one more in the front. Yeah. So you can you can do like. Properties. They don't even have. Yeah. You know, you can do four car here at least. I would think. I would think. Yeah, because he bought it ten years ago, right? So, Each yeah. for those light. Yeah. So oh, it's wow. pretty cool. What, what, what they do is they, they literally a sun tunnel. I'm sorry. Um, a skylight is a lot more expensive, probably twice, three, two to three times the cost. And the reason is because after they cut it, the window windows are more expensive, and they have to finish all the drywall. So that's why it's a lot more expensive. Here they poke a hole, they cut in some drywall right through your attic, cut a hole in your roof, and then just stick a circular tube down. And it's highly reflective, so it lets all the light in. Okay, so I'll talk about the, the, the property. The, sorry, sorry. The, the property, the lot, is 20, 25 and a half by 135. That's exceptionally large for downtown Toronto. In downtown Toronto, it's roughly 17 is about average. Uh, we see stuff as small as 13, 12. Uh, if you've got 20, that's good. 25 is very, very good. Uh, 30 is almost unheard of. Right. So their their lots are 17, 18 on average. Uh, I'm not sure if you've taken a look back there. We have a we have a detached garage in the back. I hope one day quietly we'll build a, another unit back there. <laughs> um, has everyone seen 
so uh, what is this place? This place is a two bedroom, one bath, um, renovated, open concept uh, kitchen to the living room, so there is a living room. Sometimes what we see, especially on, on second floor apartments, um, that they, because your typical house is a three bedroom house, right? single family home, it's a three bedroom home, which means if you walk through the front door, which you did, uh, and you walk upstairs, so we just walked upstairs, normally you have three bedrooms and a bathroom, right? That's what a three bedroom house normally has upstairs. Master, second bedroom, third bedroom, and a bathroom. So when people are renovating it, sometimes they turn it into a one bedroom with a living room, one bedroom, living room, kitchen. So those are your three the three rooms that were previously bedrooms. Or sometimes people go kitchen, bedroom, bedroom, no living. Or if the kitchen's large enough, they try to do eat-in kitchen, kitchen slash living. Only if you have large enough floor plate. Are you able to do stuff like that? Though, right? Otherwise, you're just left with bed, um, uh, kitchen, living, and bedroom, or kitchen, bedroom, bedroom, no living. So it, when you when you look for that, it is important because uh, having not having a living room is not a great thing. Some people do do it. The rents that they get aren't going to be too too much different than a than a one bedroom. So they're not true two bedrooms because you don't have a living room. Make sense? What are the rents? What do you think the rent is for a place like this? Twenty, thirty, two thousand, three plus. Most of you guys are pretty good. You're off. <laughs> but you guys are actually pretty close. Uh, this would be three, three, three plus. Um, I'll show you. I'll show you downstairs as well. So. Keep these rents in mind because we're going to be evaluating the property afterward to see you know what the you know if it makes sense. Yeah, is it or not? Uh, I, inc I include utilities. I like including utilities because I like jacking up my rents because it helps improve my rent rolls. It helps make the, make the property more attractive, right? Your most basic investor is not going to do a lot of due diligence into the utilities and all the other crap. They'll look just at rents, right? So I like to get my rents as high as possible. Um, some lenders will just look at the rents. They won't worry too much about the utilities and all that crap, too. Um, there's multiple reasons I like that. And it actually just makes, um, it makes it easier for the tenants as well. And I'd like to make it, personally, I like to make it as easy as possible for tenants. Who's my tenant profile here? You. You? <laughs> I, I was, I was making a joke. I was like, yeah, you're my, you're my tenant profile. You can answer. Young family of children. Who else might it be? U of T. U of T. Professionals. Professionals. A couple students. Generally speaking, and if we've been to the meetup, we've talked about this a lot, who our tenant profile is, generally I like to hit uh, young professionals. Right? Young millennials, a couple years out of school, university educated, uh, working in the core, downtown Toronto, for, you know, down for a hospital or investment bank or a tech firm, something, making 60 80k a year. Right? That's my bread and butter. I, almost everyone, that's who, I, that's who I target. That's who your tenant profile is going to be down in the core for all those condos and stuff. The reason that this business model works is because not everyone wants to live in a glass tower. Not everyone wants to live in a concrete jungle, but they still want proximity. They want to be able to s uh, step out and have parks, greenery nearby, coffee shops, not wait 10 minutes for an elevator, right? So I would say about 80%, 75 to 80% of people do want to live in those glass towers, but there's about 20 to 25% of people who don't. And the, the great thing is we can achieve about 90% of the same rents that they do down, down there. So 90% of the same rents, but I can densify three or four units under one roof. Better chance to cash flow. That's why this business model works. We don't normally get young families, actually, um, who we normally get, unless you get into the larger units. Usually two bedrooms aren't pretty large enough. If we get into the three three bedroom units, so like the bi-level units, second and third floor, for example, getting into like three bedroom, two bath, um, then those can attract families. So what, what kind of, uh, like when you do renovation, what kind of uh, 
Depends on the size. That's why the most, if you're looking at, if you're looking at this and thinking, how do I turn it into something like this? The ones that we're seeing are already done. Right? Uh, but if you're looking to turn it into something like this, first and foremost, you're looking at the floor plate. And I, I always carry this around. I always carry this around. <coughs> Laser measure, right? Why? Because I want to measure how tall I am. <laughs> no, I'm looking, I'm always looking at this. And I have a very, <laughs> after doing this a thousand times, I have a very honed sense. Um, after doing this so many times, I have a very honed sense to be able to gauge widths. I can walk into it, and I can pretty much within six inch, six to twelve inches figure out how how wide the property is. Why is width important? Yeah. It dictates what you can and can't do. Exactly right. What you don't you might not realize, well, I told you, downtown Toronto most places are like 17 lots. Right? Then the house is gonna be two, maybe three feet shorter uh, less or skinnier than that. And then the interior width is going to be like another foot skinnier than that. Right? So, this house, interior width is 17. Pretty good. 17 is pretty good. Yeah, why? Good. Why? Why is 17 good? Because we just do some quick math. A staircase, not roughly two and a half, two and a half to three feet wide. A hallway is going to be two and a half to three feet wide. And then you have a bedroom. What size bedroom do you need to, for it to be a, a viable or functional bedroom? Nine, ten. Nine, by ten. Around nine or ten, right? So if I have, think about it, if I have a 12, 12, 12 interior, 12 foot interior, I've got a staircase, it's going to be like this wide. I have a hallway, which is going to be like this wide, and then the, the bedroom is still not going to be large enough, right? So width is one of the biggest uh, determinant factors on whether or not it's a viable investment property. So to, to answer your question, if you if the, the wider it is, then you have the ability to turn it into like two bedrooms very easily, right? Otherwise, if you if it's too skinny, then you've got to do stuff like, you know, you walk up to the top of the stairs and you've got to stick the bathroom right there and then stick a bedroom here and a bedroom over there. But then like where's your kitchen going and stuff, which just, it makes it very, very difficult. But you pay a premium for width. In downtown Toronto, every foot, every foot in width is is going to be a premium. Well, what I'm saying, also another question I'm trying to ask, what is the, the ideal? Like, two, what, bedroom. two bedrooms. If you can aim, aim for two bedrooms, two bedrooms are where it's at. Mm -hmm. okay. Two bedrooms are, are even larger. Right, right. So if you can get two bedroom apartments, get two bedroom apartments. That said, you're going to be constrained by what's available, how much money you have, you know, so on and so forth. So, but... If money is no object, then I'm looking at the best investment. It's two bedrooms, mm -hmm. at least. And in fact, on an ongoing basis, as as our demographic, so the biggest demographic right now that we're paying attention to is the millennials. And as those millennials get older, they start hooking up, they start getting married, and babies. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, most most millennials are going to hook up. Um, and you, they want they need the space to grow into. So one bedrooms on, on an ongoing basis. Uh, I think there's still going to be demand. It's just not going to be as like I think the, the <coughs> sharp increase in demand is going to be two bedroom three bedroom units. Yeah. Well, this is just a guide. You don't you don't have to. Like, you can do it if you want. As you talk, as I as I speak, you can ask questions. We can go through stuff. Um, but this, when I first did the property tour, I expected it going to be like, and then. Yeah. So this is for three level. This is a two story. So the second second floor, main floor, and basement. And you're predicting some of this. If you sold it, you have to see the rest of the property first. <laughs> then you have to guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, when you say 17 and 3, 
So, so if I measured it? if I measured 17 interior width, interior width. most likely it's about 20. 18 okay. exterior width, okay. right? And then most likely it's 20, 20. maybe 20. 21 okay. lot size. Okay. However, Give what did I say? About it's halfway through the tour, 25 and a half. So have a driveway. we have a mutual driveway shared with the uh, neighbor. That's including that. It's included in that 25, so unfortunately I don't have the ability just to extend this house. So it's a, it's a mutual drive, which means we both have right away shared access. Is so it going well? Uh, this, this, so this guy, he, he has, he has a, an awesome property that he treats like shit, and he gets sheep and it drives me bonkers. <laughs> because we know what he, what he could be getting, but he just puts in these puts in riffraff type tenants, and he has one good tenant, so he, out back, he used to have a garage just like I have here. He actually extended it. Crap! Be in here. <laughs> Close the door, I guess. Yeah, I know. He, he created another apartment in the back, actually. And that's, anyway, that's his only good tenant. I don't know why. <laughs> in the garage? In the, in the garage. You want to get away from the other guy. <laughs> so, um, uh, sorry. What was the question? The shared drive um, can be a source of conflict at times. It can be a source of more space. It can be. Um, and it's a pain in the butt because parking in the back is a pain in the butt. We'll, we'll talk about the parking when we go down to the main floor. Any, any other questions here, though? So how, how do you divide a floor pack? So like, second floor? We'll, we'll take a look. Okay. We're going to go there now. Any questions for this one? Right back there is laundry, by the way. You're gonna, if you open it, you'll see all of our dirty laundry, so don't open it. <laughs> you can open it. Two bedroom, one bathroom with laundry. And utilities included. Three utilities K. included. This unit is nicer than the rest. Um, you know, we've, we've put in like built in shelves, and the lighting, and a few other nice stuff. We live, we live here. Um, I, I wouldn't necessarily spend all that money. You have to understand whether it makes sense in your particular um, uh, area and your demographic. Fortunately, in the annex, people will pay for it. But if I went a few streets west, if I went out to like Dufferin or Lansdowne, this would probably be overkill. Okay? There's certain neighborhoods that will, if you will just won't get your rents that you need. I'm saying that now, but I'm going to eat my words because St. Clarence is over there and it gets this type of thing as well. I'm eating, I'm eating my but generally speaking, what would be rents over there? I can't give you all the answers. <laughs> we're going we're to learn them as we go. <laughs> right. Okay. But anyway, any other questions here? So there's a bathroom what here. Of, sorry, what kind of, kind of uh, cap rate would you get on a cap rate like this? Cap rates are not applicable as much as, much as, as, much as you probably disagree. Cap rates are not a way to calculate properties less than four units. Why? Cap rate is is a, is a, is a measure of how performance of a property and cash flow. It's basically the, the bulk of the today. Um, so you look at cap rate and people go, oh, I have a four cap. In Toronto, roughly speaking, it's about a four cap. You know, three and a half, three and a quarter, four cap. Does anyone know what a cap rate is? I'm not going to get I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts of it, um, but cap rate is basically the net operating income of the property. So if I take all my rents, deduct all my expenses, don't include the mortgage in there, just all your expenses, then you're left with what's called NOI, net operating income, right? Annual. And if I divide that number by the value of the property, I'll get a cap rate, and that cap rate is a percentage. And that percentage is used to measure one property performance of one property versus another, or one asset class versus another. Okay. So three and a quarter. So people look at three and a quarter or four percent. They compare it to bonds and other stuff. Uh, it's not applicable to single-family homes. Uh, it's it's only applicable to larger, multifamily, or commercial. And I can get into a very long discussion about why, but I.
but to answer your question, um, the but most that's an property you look for that, right? You want to see how much it's that's a it's make. an oversimplistic way to look at uh, how oh, to compare like the property. First step kind of thing. Uh, I would use alternate alternate methods of comparing. So, for example, I would look at cash flow, and I would look at cash on cash. I would also look at equity pay down and equity pay down on cash. So, and I would look at there's all alternate methods that that are better apples to apples comparisons to be able to compare one property to another and asset class to asset class. The cap rate in 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 this type of investment is not cap rate. You know, it's cap rate. Just one simple question I have. Uh, but uh, what, what are the up, up and coming area in Toronto that you see? Can, I, can you put a pin in that question? I'll answer that at the, at the bar. Well, not at the bar, restaurant. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, okay, so I'll quickly just. Crap, that's the. Wow, we've been here for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Bathroom, kitchen, uh, there's a closet there, there's laundry there, bedroom, bedroom. Uh, place is fully renovated. <coughs> Uh, roughly three grand plus, and those are a few takeaways. Cool. Yeah, so that's this. All right. <laughs>
sounds in between, and now the sounds that are in between two notes. How about No. All through the notes? So the top four notes. I'd say it reduces, uh, it attenuates the noise by the... It's not perfect, but it, it does help. So, kitchen, living, bathroom, uh, uh, laundry, closet, bedroom, bedroom. This floor plate is larger than most. It's roughly 800 square feet, so that's why we're able to get a pretty good layout in here. Um, <laughs> most houses that we're going to walk through, they, the houses aren't going to be this wide and they're not going to be this long. So that's why, if you do, it's it's a it's good. But generally, most most regular houses won't have this kind of floor plate. Did you do the bathroom with the walls like this? I would never have thought of doing that. What tile? Oh, no, I didn't. I, 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 I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. They did some great stuff here. <laughs> <laughs> it can be good. Or it can also not be so good. Uh, yeah. There's stuff that I would do differently, but um, anyway, it's pre-existing. It works. I'm not going to mess with it. So just just a question. You said you just so Sure. Uh, so I wouldn't have done such a cheap renovation. So they did a really crappy renovation. Um, they didn't. They they util they utilized space really well, uh, but they but they didn't uh, do the renovation. Right it's like they, they the, the layouts are very good. When we go to the place, it's just great to do. Uh, but the the quality of the workmanship, um, the you know some of the things the cabinets are are complete crap. Actually, they look okay. But they're not durable. Um, I would put like granite countertops or quartz countertops. I have it up in my unit, but they didn't put it here. So like, they did some stuff, but they didn't do others. So they didn't put pole lights all the way through. They put pole lights in some places, but when I redid those roofs, I put pole lights all the way through. So I know what they're trying to do. Trying to cut costs, right? So there's there's certain things I would have just done the whole thing done, done it properly, but they're doing it as a flip. It was viable for. It was viable in the beginning, but as I started to do upgrades, um, I, I just did everything properly. For example, it's soundproofing, as an example. Right? Any other questions here when we were downstairs? Okay. Go outside. Yes. Rents. Rents. 28. 28. 27, 28. They are getting a discount. Um, they're, they're paying 2250 so yes. they're paying 2300 they're paying 2300 because they've been here for a few years in the past, in the past two years rents have jumped substantially right. um, and they've been here because one, run, one roommate moved out and then they just found a roommate to move in so I didn't get a full tenant turnover and quite frankly I don't practice what I preach I tell everyone raise rents I'm too lazy um, <laughs> to do that. It, it, for me, I have I have other stuff that I, I'm worrying about. I advise that everyone everyone does raise rents, so just listen to what I say, not as I. Not what well, you do? <laughs> but it, it's important to actually raise your rents because you gotta keep you gotta keep pace. For for us, I'm I know I, I keep on talking about cash flow. Like if you got multiple properties, you gotta focus your time and energy where you need where it's your biggest bank of the buck. Trying to get an extra 30 bucks or 50 bucks at a rent is not where I, I see the value for me. It is where I see value for you guys. Though. Okay, go inside. Soundproofing, just just ripping down all the drywall and putting soundproofing in. I also have to Just a so wash and dryer? Yeah, yeah, but it's funny how they put it in. They have it in every single unit? That's pretty good, huh? Well, it, it, it gets a better class of tenant, right? You can charge oh, more. I see why they do it like this. But it's ridiculous. They, they could have paid a few more, a few hundred dollars more and got a stackable that goes that way. <laughs> right, so. Yeah, I don't know why. Into these, and there's a few hundred more for the better quality ones. Oh, yeah, yeah. These yeah. aren't that much cheaper. Yeah. Yeah, I hate these ones, actually. These are the cheapest ones. You can get it for like 400 bucks or 600 bucks. Oh, really? For, for both? For total? Yeah, well, this, yeah. well these, are, these ones are really cheap, though. Like, these ones, like... Oh, cheap ones, yeah. These, these are really cheap ones, though. Oh, and, they, the one piece. and then they break down easy, too. Oh, 
So I, 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 I would go for at least a thousand because it lasts for a lot longer, you know. No, not not the e-pipe, but the when you go to the vest, like when you go for the. Not for Vespa. Yeah, even though it's. And I have, oh. I have, I have fire extinguishers for every unit too. That's the other Where group on that, that side. Oh, you did that? That was yeah. expensive. Fire extinguishers? Oh, oh I thought you meant like interconnected. <laughs> what the hell is this? This is like so small. <laughs> so much smaller on that side. Yeah. Four packs. Sevens foot six, uh, seven foot three uh, ceilings. Bachelor um, uh, closet here. Five hundred units. Uh, I didn't originally. When I had tenants who came in here to take a look at the place, they were like, "Oh, I love the place. It's great. You know, it's actually very cozy. It feels doesn't feel necessarily like you know a basement, a crappy basement apartment." But I can't fit my furniture in here. Split it into two units, right? So I was always having problems. And I'm like, oh, I can't do my furniture. So, okay, you know what? I'm to I went out thousand dollars for the first place. And now I have ten suits come in just to get you get a premium for that though? You get a premium. Uh, so I just get maybe like a thousand or hundred per per basement. So I mean a basement that's twenty six hundred is pretty good. Yeah. Uh bathroom. Right. So this unit is not very spacious, but it does serve the purpose for you know a young person who doesn't have a lot of furniture and what have you. Well, Twenty six hundred so, basement, that's really good. I mean for a basement I recommend lighter floors and lighter floors in here. Hot lights <laughs> This is not bamboo, it's laminate too. Oh, is it? Yeah, there are, there is bubbling, because okay. there, I think there's, we're starting to put in vinyl in all, in all of our units. You hold up that uh, Well, way more durable, water resistant, mm. and uh, sound, sound resistant as well between the units. It actually adds another STC. Can you get vinyl that looks like 50 vinyl? Or? Yeah. So second floor, what do you think the floor is on second floor? I thought it was laminate. Well, Q QVC is so quality vinyl to make it. It's probably like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah, we're, we're finishing up. Okay. Oh, sorry. <coughs> oh, um, 
in your um, usual picture. Oh, I locked the door. <laughs> oh, three zero two. We're leaving. I said locked oh, the door. Yeah. So <laughs> we can try and get in. Stay back. Okay. Any questions? Good. Good. Where's the chair from? It's great. It's sufficient. Only 600 for basement. So what I would have done differently, this guy put white points, is I would have put stainless. There's no reason. I would have also sized it properly. <laughs> <laughs> One inch more. So this unit was how much? What is that? Sit more or less the same. Oh, the, the other unit? Smaller, yeah. Oh. But, uh, very, very good use of space. Selection. Look at the selection of scotches. <laughs> That's not bad. I know, pretty good. Actually, I mean, this, this, I, one's, this one's good. I would have okay. got them. Like, how but. Well, but these are cheaper. Like <laughs> these ones are cheaper, so it's affordable still. Yeah. Um. Okay, so it's very very similar to the previous one. The bathrooms are similar. Only this one has a tub. Um, the kitchens are 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 similar. Uh, they did something really creative with this layout in order to make this. And they did it with all the only what like a hundred thousand? I don't know how they did it. Like, I don't know how they do it. I, like, if I were to calculate how to how to actually like the cost of this renovation, if yeah. I was going to do it, I would like four units. I would easily be over two hundred. So yeah. So just easily, and just, that's assuming I didn't have to do anything structural. Yeah. And and I didn't I have to do, do like underpinning or anything else. I don't know how they did it. It had high ceilings, so I didn't have they didn't have to do that. The foundations are good, so they don't have to worry about that. Are we missing people. Yeah, some of them left because they, they didn't know we were going to the second unit. Oh, shoot. So do some people mind, went to the... Do you mind going to grab whoever's... Yeah, they went out to the parking lot. Yeah, they, they didn't realize. Um, Where's the furnace? The furnace? I'll point to the furnace um, as we walk. It's, it's, it was in the, the hallway as we walked yeah. to this unit. It's probably not good for you, eh? Dining you you almost hit your head there. Yeah. 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 Oh, almost. Dining rooms are not yeah, you gotta, I can see you, uh, you're like ducking a little bit. If I see a dining room, whatever it is, it's going to be a short They hire people like us to do like airplane and repair and stuff, eh? Because we can fit into the... Yeah, that's... Yeah, this, this one's good. Not too bad. You guys didn't know when I put this one? Is everyone else coming in or? No. They've announced it, but everyone's just checking. Okay. Okay, cool. And the rent. That's crazy. That's crazy. And actually, I could probably move up a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, it's been, it's been, actually, it's actually been 1300 for a while, and I've been, <laughs> until I've been cutting with the, my tenants to find your own replacement, so they've been finding their own replacement, so I don't have to. So they've been finding their own places. I could have slowly been increasing it, but plus heading for me. Could you get more now if this is I on the market? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's also fully furnished. Oh, uh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So that's 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 the little bit of the premium. Yeah. But yeah. I'm seeing basements, two bedroom, two bedroom basement units, yeah. um, over two grand now. Mm -hmm. Just like it, bonkers. 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 This is why this, this all works. Okay. Uh, I was saying panel, 200 amp, and sub panels. Or sub -panels right, where he sleeps. So if it's fully furnished, are you getting more turn turnover? I do get more turnover. That's why. That's that's the downside to it. I don't. I don't love that. Mm -hmm. Sub panels just control it. Individual units. So the power brick. It's just your. Do you? However, the way that they did it was not great. They still wired some stuff down to the main panel. <laughs> Even though they put sub-panels sub everywhere. 
and so why like some washes or whatever down to Everything is half assed. So to answer, answer, I can't remember whose question. Someone was asking me, what would you do differently? I would have done stuff properly. <laughs> God damn it. Because right. you're looking at long term and they're just thinking today, right? Yeah. Do you have a separate meter? Uh, one meter. Well, just one meter, right? That's why you tear the uh, separate meter. You're taking one off and you're in the wall to cover it up. How Door. Yeah. Sorry, I'll, I'll yeah. answer your question. Um, so they're not really saving, they're, they're more.